Look at this little cuddly beagle. You're acting like a little baby. You're so cute, Pinocchio. You hung over from hanging out with your buddy, Ralph, <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> uh, we are watching The Snowy Day based on the book by Ezra Jack Keats, which is one of my favorite books. Like ever since I was a kid, I always read it in my classrooms. Gigi knows that book well. And there's a little like 40 minute like mini show or like mini film. And it's so cute. And I don't know if all or some of the members of Boys to Men are in it singing. Literally, we heard one one dude goes by and he like sings just a little bit and Tyler and I were like, uh, excuse me, how do I hear more from this guy? And so we looked it up and of course it's Boys to Men. So I'm like, of course, it's so freaking good. Anyway, it is warming my heart. If you need a cute, especially if you have a youngerish kid, it's a, it's a good one to watch. That's all. You recognize, like, look at his little snowsuit. It's just like in the book. This is on Amazon Prime, right, Taylor? Yeah. So I think cute. it's an Amazon Prime original. Yeah. All right, friends, let's bake some bread. So uh, the way we're going to do it is actually in a Dutch oven. And what that does is it traps steam. Well, there's, we're not going to go into the whole thing, but suffice it to say, it traps steam. Uh, sort of like a baker's oven is going to pump steam into an oven. This will help keep the steam within the bread, and then it, we'll take it off the lid at some point. But anyway, we're not going to go into that right now. Suffice it to say, <laughs> how many times am I going to say that again? Uh... We're gonna bake these in some uh, Dutch ovens. I've got two different kinds here. I've got a normal sort of Le Creuset uh, style Dutch oven. And then I've got a Lodge uh, cast iron one, which this uh, combo cooker is pretty neat. You can use it for uh, like soups and stews and stuff like that. And then you have a lid that goes with it. Um, and then you can also use it as a uh, skillet with a lid. It's pretty nifty. So uh, these, I've got the oven preheating to 500 degrees in the Caribbean seas. Um, they're gonna go in the oven here and they're going to go in while it's preheating. So these are going to slowly heat up with the oven. All right, so we are preheating. Dutch ovens are in the oven. The idea is that you want your two Dutch ovens to be as hot as possible because you wanna hit the bread with an initial blast of heat to really help it uh, get that rise that we want. So we want not only the oven to be hot, we want the actual uh, vessels in which they're going to be baked to be hot as well. Okay, so now it's time to start baking. So like I said last night, I, I, I shaped these loaves and I did it super late in the evening, so I did the quickest possible way. All I was trying to do is basically get surface tension. There are as many techniques and methods of doing this as there are bakers in the world. So there's a lot of different ways to do this. So when I was shaping the loaves last night, I could have done all different kinds of things. There are lattice things you could do. There are folding things you can do. I just basically tucked it underneath itself to give it some surface t uh, tension. Um, and then I left it seam side up. So you can see this is the seam on the bottom here. Um, so some people, uh, I'm gonna turn it over here um, and put the seam side down. Some people like to actually bake it with the seam side up. Um, because then it sort of gives it a more uh, rustic artisan kind of look because it uh, it will create its own fissures, uh, if you will, as it's baking. Um, I'm going to keep the, uh, the, the seam side down this time and actually slash the top. If you do it this way where you have the, uh, if you have this on top, you don't have to give it any slashes because it's obviously going to uh, bake with that in it. So we're going to do it a more sort of classic method, if you will, uh, where I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to uh, slash the top and then we're going to bake it. So obviously the uh, things in the oven here are 500 degrees, so they are incredibly, incredibly hot. So this part you have to be very, very careful about, watch your fingers, um, but here's what we're gonna do. Okay, these both come out. Make sure you have very, very thick oven mitts and you don't have anyone around, any kids or anything, because they are extremely, extremely hot. And we're gonna work as quickly as we can here. I'm gonna take this lid off and this lid off. Flour goes in the bottom here. I use this rice flour because I think it makes it easier in the end to uh, to pull it out than it would be if it was regular flour. Because this is a little bit thicker grain, so it kind of gives it a little bit more of a barrier there. Some on the top of this here. Comes out into my hand. Like so. Ooh, you can hear it sizzle. This one you have to be even more careful because it's got the high sides. So just be very careful if you have one like this. And it goes. And of course, if you're baking seam side up, you don't need to do this next part, but if you are not, I'm just gonna make, it, make this extremely simple here. I'm just gonna do an X on the top. Same here. Watch your fingies. Good. 
Lids back on, working quickly, and back in the oven they go. Okay, they are in the oven. I'm gonna put them in there for 25 minutes to start. It's nice, I'll peek in here really fast. You can see it's nice if you can do both at once because otherwise um, you have to, it takes quite a bit longer to bake them because you have to do one, then you have to pull it out, and then you have to do the second one. Um, and it takes about 40 minutes, 45 minutes for them to bake. Um, but uh, so you have to have two Dutch ovens in order to do it that way. Um, and you have to have a large enough oven. But if you can, it makes it a lot faster. All right, first timer's gone off. Now I'm going to attempt to do this here with one hand. <laughs> so. First lid is gonna come off. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Beautiful. Second lid's gonna come off, trying not to burn anything. <laughs> Beautiful. Okay, so we've got a lot of rise. Those look great. They're gonna go back in and they're gonna bake for another 20 minutes at 450. It might need more to 20, 20 to 25 minutes, and this is at convection. Um, so uh, this is, I'm gonna do start at 20 minutes and see how they look at that point. It might need a few more minutes after that um, because I like them to be nice and uh, cooked bien cuit, which means that they're very well cooked, which has a little bit of brown at the top and a little bit of uh, even burnt bits and bobs. It's delicious. All right, the 20 minute timer just went off. Let's take a look. Ooh, those are looking so good. See how they got the nice crispy edges here around the edge? Oh, okay, I'm gonna give it like two more minutes. All right, good. Time to evacuate. Look at those, oh my gosh. It might look a little overcooked, but trust me, this is exactly, exactly what you want. Those are gorgeous. Look at that. Okay, doing this one-handed, probably not smart. Don't do as I do. Okay. Oh yeah, you see those nice crispy little edges there? That's where you get all your flavor. Oh, okay, not all your flavor, but oh, they're so good. And part of the reason that you want to cook it a little to the dark brown stage, not just like the blonde stage, um, is because it gives you a lot more complex flavors. Um, and uh, it's, it's just fantastic. All right, so uh, I'm now going to evacuate these, as Alton Brown would say, to my uh, cooling rack. I could not think of the word cooling rack. I sat here for about eight seconds trying to think of what the heck that was called. It's called a cooling rack. I'm going to evacuate these to the cooling rack. <laughs> listen, listen, do you hear it? Can you hear that crackling? And listen, listen to this. That's a beautiful sound. All right, I'm gonna let them cool and then we're gonna start slicing. for about 30 minutes now. Um, so it should be good to go. What did we learn from Ratatouille? Everyone together, you tell bread is good by the way that it sounds good. Now listen, listen, listen. Ready? Oh yeah, listen, 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 listen. Listen, here it comes. Oh yeah, that's good bread. Okay, I wanna take a quick, quick second here to talk about knives. So. There are different styles of bread knife. You can see this one here has real small tangs on it. Um, and this is perfect if, like, if you're making like a sandwich bread, you're trying to slice something real soft. Um, and this is an extremely sharp knife. But when it comes to things like artisan bread, where it's got that nice heavy crust, you need to have a bread knife that has their serration further apart um, because that's gonna much more easily cut through uh, the, the outer crust there. Now, um, I was looking, because this is the only bread knife we had for a while, and it was just it was just kind of tearing up the bread when it was trying to cut it, because it wasn't the right kind of bread knife. So I was looking on all different kinds of sites, trying to find like the best bread knife for this style of bread. And so I was looking at knives, because you know, knives can be so expensive. I was looking at knives that were $199, $299. I'm like, well, you know, I bake bread often enough, maybe it's gonna be worth it. Then I found this little beauty. And this little beauty retails for like, $12. And I kid you not, this is an amazing, amazing bread knife. And I thought, you know what, I'll go ahead and order it and give it a try. And if it doesn't work, I'm only out like 12 bucks. Uh, it's amazing. 
highly, highly recommend. Um, so that's my little spiel about uh, bread knives, and uh, I'll, uh, I'll link this one below. It is awesome. So let's take a look here, you ready? Look at that. Look at that. All right, let's do another one here. Come on. Look at that, nice and soft in the middle there. It smells like heaven. It's got that nice sour flavor. And then I got this nice, beautiful crust on the outside. Let's give it a try. All right, I'm just gonna spread a little Kerrygold butter here. If you want an easy way to up your bread game, buy better butter. Buy some Kerrygold butter, buy some of the more expensive butter because that alone is gonna make a huge difference in the taste of your bread. Oh my gosh. Is it good? Try it, bye. Unbelievable. Oh yeah. This is like the best it's ever been. Mm-hmm. Mm. Well, I'm satisfied and smiling. <laughs> All right, one final quick thing on the sourdough. I wanna talk about storage. Because um, a lot of people uh, have asked, like, how do you store your bread? Because if you, obviously you, ch you can't just leave it out. So what do you do? Uh, so I have found a couple things. The Ziploc works. However, uh, if you have it zipped, it keeps all the moisture in. And there's so much moisture in this bread um, that within a day or two, it gets really, really soft. You, you lose that crunch. Um, and the, 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 the crunchy crust is part of what makes this bread so good. So you have these fabric bags, which let you let it breathe, um, which is great. But then what happens is this open section right here also gets really hard and crusty. So you either have to cut that piece off and use it for something else you know, or, um, or just deal with really crusty bread because it keeps this crusty, but it also keeps that crusty. So what I have found is I will use the fabric bag and I'll make sure I, I know which direction the bread is facing on that open edge there. And when I put it in our little bread drawer, I make sure that that flat edge is down. And that helps prevent it from getting really hard uh, within a day or two. And we go through one of these bowls in about a week. So um, by the end, it will get kind of hard and crusty because it's, I mean, it's been sitting out for a week. But that is what I found to be the best method um, for the one that you're currently using, put it down. Um, so the other thing is, other people like to try and use bees wrap. Um, it never really works super well for me. I use it for a lot of things, but not for uh, bread. So what I'll do with the other one this will freeze really well for uh, two weeks, maybe even longer. So what I'll do, because we're not going to eat two full two full bowls of sourdough in, in a week. I mean, we probably could, but um, a lot of times I'll give this away to friends or family or whoever. But if I'm keeping the second bowl, what I'll do is I'll put it in the fabric bag, just like the other one. And then I'll put this in the Ziploc bag. And I just keep reusing. The, this is the same Ziploc bag that I used when I was uh, cold proofing them. I just keep reusing the same bags over and over again. And then this one you can totally seal. And they'll put it like this in the freezer for up to usually two, two weeks. Now, if you want to use a Ziploc bag, you can for the one that you're actually like out using. Um, however, I would just recommend you keep it open a little bit. Don't fully seal it. Maybe keep it open about that much so the bread can breathe a little bit so that it doesn't become really soft and, uh, and spongy within a day or two. Just allowing that air to get in there is gonna make a big difference. Okay, now I think I'm officially done talking about sourdough. You may go about your day. <laughs> Guys, I got the diaper bag that we're going to use for this next baby in the mail the other day. And I was already, this was the one I was going to get. It's the Luli baby, baby. <laughs> uh, and they have a lot of different colors. They have like this size and then they have like the petite one. But I got just the regular size figuring I'll probably want this size. Anyway, uh, I had reached out to them just asking about it and asking like, hey, do you have a promo code I could share with followers and stuff? And they offered to send one for free, which was so nice. I do, I think I did get the promo code though, so I will have that linked below. But like I said, they did send this to me for free, which was so gracious of them because I am jazzed. I was gonna buy it anyway. I love this color that I picked. I can't think of the name of it, but I'll put that below too. But it's perfect because after having one baby, I have realized there are certain things that my diaper bag has to have. First thing, cup holders on both sides. Do you call them cup holders? Yeah. It has to be there for like bottles or whatever. It has to have them and it has to be on the outside. That's just the way we operate. And so it's nice to have. But I liked that it had this front pocket that zippers shut for like quick access to things. I love that it has a super wide opening in that it has these little pockets to use for whatever you need them for. You could put diapers and wipes in them. You could put bottles, formula, 
Um, it's got another zipper pouch there. Of course, it's got the long strap if you want to use it that way. And it comes with like a little changing pad, which is nice. So I, I don't know, man. This is after having tried a couple different ones with the first baby. I liked a lot of them, but I wasn't totally sold. Like that it was the best of the best. Some of them that were like this were similar, but they were a little heavier. Like the, uh, is it Fawn Design one I have? I like but I find that one to be a little bit heavier than this. And that was one big turnoff because even when there was nothing in it, it was heavy. This one, I, I wouldn't call like the lightest diaper bag on the market, but it is a lot lighter than that one. And they have like, like I said, a lot of different colors. So wanted to bring it up because this is the one I was planning to get. And then when they sent it to me, I was so freaking excited. And yeah, I am sure in the future I will share like a what's in my diaper bag type video on my channel. But that, of course, we are months away from. <laughs> All right, it is time finally for us to get rid of some of these delicious Christmas cookies we made because there is no feasible way we eat through all of these. Uh, so I've got my little boxes I bought on Amazon to give to some neighbors uh, and stuff like that. Let me show you, they, they're they perfect. How cute are these? So I just grabbed some parchment paper to kind of line the bottom. And what I'll probably do, because we've got our Thin Mints, no, no, our Tagalongs, our Thin Mints, <laughs> we've eaten through a lot of those Thin Mints, our sugar cookies and then our like molasses ginger cookies I think I'll put like two types on the bottom and then put another little parchment paper and then two types on top something like that um yeah and actually another thing I might do is put the thin mints we give them in a little baggie because sometimes the mint flavor gets on everything else and just ruins it so I'll probably do that as well just as an extra precaution from years of doing this <laughs> But yeah, I'm excited. And like I said, these little boxes are so cute. And aren't they perfect? I love it. All right. So I think I've got them all in there. I was able to fit the three kinds of cookies down there. And I did end up putting the Thin Mints in a little baggie to keep them separate. And then just a little piece of parchment paper to kind of have those on top. Then I can close them up, maybe seal them with a piece of tape. And we're going to take them to our neighbors. So I ended up just writing who it's to, who it's from, and then what's in it just on the box because I figured, I mean, these boxes are going to end up with like icing on them and stuff. And there's like, I use some tape to close it. So it's not necessarily one they're going to like reuse. So I figured that works perfectly. And then they know what the heck they're eating. Well, I'm out with my sweet parents and we just got some pizza. This is, sorry, the light is on and it's like blinding everyone. We got, what kind of pizza is that, daddy? Del Papa, it seems very perfect. Yeah, it sounds really good. Mom got some gluten free pasta? Yeah, yeah, chicken. Chicken, it looks really, actually, it's really good. And then we also got a Bianca, like a white pizza, we're all gonna share. And we got these two little cuties. <laughs> so, super eerie, like, but we are headed to uh, a place in our town that does like an outdoor lights display. I know we've already seen some lights, but we're doing this with my parents because we did the Halloween version of this with Tyler's parents, which was so much, so much fun. Yeah. So this is the Christmas one. And I thought I'd been to this one because it's like you walk through it. But now that we were talking about it, Tyler said he's never yeah, been. I'm like, well, I wouldn't have gone without you. And I, I'm like, maybe I haven't been to the Christmas version. So yeah. I'm excited. Like, yeah, this is like the, the walking version of what we drove through the other day. <laughs> but different in a different place, but yeah. it's the same idea. <laughs> but I just love all these kinds of Christmas festivities and Gigi of course loves them too, which is fun. So Plus, also- they make great montages. <laughs> <laughs>
you've already seen the whole montage, but we're cutting in after, you know what I mean? Because we didn't know part of this was seeing this really beautiful historical mansion. Yeah, the Lily House. And, and I, we've it's wanted so here cool. for years. And it's always closed, or we just, the timing's not right. And you just, it's just a part of admission. I'm like, <gasps> so no we idea. are all jazzed. So, all right. So my dad was just telling me of something I did not know back in the 60s, you said, maybe? Yeah. Well, tell me about it again. <laughs> Silver artificial Christmas tree that they marketed in the 50s. And uh, instead of putting lights on it, they would sell you a rotating wheel that was made with cellophane of red cellophane, blue cellophane, or green and yeah, you know, different colors. Yeah. And they had a light behind it. It would rotate electrically. The light would shine through each pane as it would rotate past the light, and it would shine the tree the color of the pane. Huh. And that's just that they think, didn't have like lights on it. It I think was Elvis different. even sang a song about. <laughs> A silver Christmas tree. <laughs> well, he was I saying that because it was, you might be right though. These were changing lights over there, and so he was talking about how that was kind of similar. That's so funny. I've never heard of that in my life. My mom's decided it was only in the, or it was more in the 60s. It could be. I mean, I, I remember, I remember they existed. Yeah. Well, right. That's so cool. I'm going to have to look this up. <laughs> so, making some calm now that we're home. And this is what it looks like. I had some of you guys asking. That's what it looks like. Uh, and raspberry lemon is our favorite. Tyler puts the collagen peptides in his because it's flavorless. I did pre-pregnancy. I don't know. I don't know if this pregnancy is safe or not, to be honest. And quite frankly, I've been too lazy to look it up. I just have been leaving it out of mine, which obviously it's tasteless. So, But this is just so freaking good. So we're both going to have some of that. We're both whistlers. We whistle I'm a, a lot. terrible whistler, though. We do it a lot, though. Oh, I do all kinds of things all the time that I'm bad at, but I do them all. After you, <laughs> I just started in my cold. <laughs> anyway, title of today's vlog. I just <laughs> it doesn't need, it makes no sense to most people, only to us, really. Oh man, we um, both decided, by the way, on the way home, that uh, we were looking forward to going to bed for real this time early. It's like nine thirty. No painting, no, no painting, drywalling, no Christmas cookies, no late night movie making, no. <laughs> I literally thought you said something different. That is funny. I can't repeat it here. I could, but I'm not gonna. Should, but shorn't. <laughs> That's my best usage. line. Perfect oh, usage. Ten out of ten. What does he? What uh, does Michael Scott say? Could, could but, but can't. can't. Would but won't. Should but shorn't. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, we're just excited to like sit in bed. Yeah. And read our books like the old folks we are, <laughs> and drink our magnesium drink. Yeah. That's the old folks line I needed. And just yeah. like actually be in bed at the same Which time. Which is what we normally do, early. you know, the other 11 months out of the year. But yeah, you it's know. just a weird month for false facts. Yeah. It really has been. We were just talking about it. We were like, gosh, it's so crazy because, you know, Vlogmas aside, like just right now is just a crazy time. It's always yeah. a crazy time. I don't know what I'm talking we're, about. It's we're, never we're not crazy a crazy right time. Now, guys. We're in all my head. Crazy. In my head, it's always like, oh, it used to be so much better. Or, oh, it's going to get so much better. It's always the same. It's always busy. It's always crazy. But you but, know how it is at you Christmas know, time. You know. Uh, you're imposing your own deadlines on yourself for things <laughs> like Christmas cookies and cards. You're, you yeah. Know. So, like, all the Christmas cards you addressed, like, that was a whole night. And then, you know, all the cookies we've been baking and then working on Genevieve's room and, like, all these different things. You know, there's so many, like, things we've been working on. I'm like, it feels like we haven't had, like, a normal... A uh, couple weeks, but uh, I mean, that's just to be expected. This time well, and the other thing, thing you guys don't see behind the scenes is like today. Okay. The vlog that went up the day we're filming this, which was yesterday's that you saw, right? Duh. Anyway, um, I know that's confusing. It's almost confusing to talk about, but anyway, <laughs> that took Tyler all day to edit. You, I mean, you were baking bread and stuff in the morning, but then right. like we didn't see each other much today until the evening. Yeah. And it stinks because it was a, it was a well, weekend day. Like it, And so, part of it was that. It was probably an hour and a half worth of footage that I cut down to 37 minutes, 38 minutes, Which, and that's abnormal. Normally, we don't have that but, much But it was footage. because, yeah, because I just had the camera on when I was, like, doing stuff with the bread. And so then, some, you know, anyway, so it just took a long, longer than, than normal yeah. today. Um, normally, it's not that long. Normally, I can edit yeah. in under an hour, but um, then you have to export and upload and you make the thumbnail and all that kind of stuff. Anyway, doesn't matter. Um, that was an abnormally long one today, though. Yeah. I'm excited <laughs> to see it. I haven't seen it yet. You made it. Did you just make it live? It's uploading right now. It, it was 
exporting, and I was hoping to upload it before we left to go to this uh, light thing tonight. Mm -hmm. And uh, <laughs> and I didn't get a chance to because it didn't finish. But as soon as we got home, I started the upload. We so, are over explaining. Everyone's like, yeah. we don't care. The video is yeah. already up. We've already seen yeah, it. Yeah, just do whatever. You, <laughs> Sorry, <yeah>. guys. <laughs> uh, it's anyway. like when you go to like on an airplane. The guy's like, ah. The pilot says, oh, I'm going to fly it up to 30,000 and we're going to take a, take a left over Milwaukee. And it's like, all right, that's fine. I don't, I don't care. Just end up where it I'm says on totally the ticket. I'm totally interested in that part, so that's funny. <laughs> it's an old Jerry Seinfeld joke. Oh, it's just end up where it says on the ticket. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care what route you take to get me to there. Just, just get me to there. It's funnier funny. when he says it. Um, anyway, any, anything else? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't think so. I'm excited to go read in bed. Yeah, it sounds good. Which one are you starting with, by the way, out of those four books? Number of the Stars. Mm -hmm. um, I've already started that. I only read like a chapter each night. I'm not going to get to my 50 unless I really pick up the pace. But uh, yeah, you might. I might. We'll see. Um, those books are a lot shorter. I mean, they're especially compared to what you're taking. Well, like Number of the Stars, I could probably sit down and read in like one sitting. But I've been going to bed at like the last couple nights, like one o'clock in the morning. Yeah. So I've been tired. So anyway, so we'll, we'll try and read through those. I'm going to try and read through those. But, uh, yeah. Awesome. Mm -hmm. All right. Well. Love you guys. See you later. <laughs>